sorry, 15. Non-consensual use of medication in psychiatric institutions. We are told in U.S. government replies that the U.S. Constitution constrains government's use of non-consensual medical treatment and clinical investigations. These, are, these practices are permitted only in carefully controlled situations and there are also constitutional safeguards such as the federal protection and advocacy for persons with mental illness program and there are also regulations on the use of uh, restraint on uh, mental uh, ment uh, on patients in mental institutions um, on the other hand information from non-governmental sources provides ample evidence that state and local governments routinely apply and allow the administration of neuroleptic drugs and electroshock treatment without patients informed consent and against their will. The use of these drugs is not limited to psychiatric institutions but is allowed in nursing homes for older persons, especially those diagnosed with dementia and for people in situations of particular vulnerability such as children in foster care homes and prison inmates. New York law, for example, permits compulsory treatment of persons confined against their will and the criteria being used is that the, it has to be shown that the individual consent lacks the capacity to make a reasoned decision. New York law also allows for forced drugging in prison and even after release from prison. Now, scientific and scientific research and subjective reports reveal that neuroleptic drugs have serious side effects. They are mind altering, they cause trembling, shivering, contractions and all kinds of uh, physical uh, other side effects. And on this matter, the Special Rapporteur on Torture recently called for an absolute ban on all forced and non-consensual medical interventions against people with disabilities, including the non-consensual administration of psychosurgery, electroshock, and mind-altering drugs such as neuroleptics, the use of restraint and solitary confinement for both long and short-term application. Furthermore, the U.S. National Council on Disability, an independent federal agency mandated to make recommendations to the President and Congress on disability issues, has recommended that laws that allow the use of involuntary treatment such as forced drugging and inpatient and outpatient commitment should be viewed as inherently suspect because they are incompatible with the principle of self-determination. Public policy, the recommendation goes on to say, needs to move in the direction of a totally voluntary community-based mental health system that safeguards human dignity and respects individual autonomy. Against this background, I just want to raise a few questions. First of all, is the U.S. government concerned about this widespread use of non-consensual psychiatric medication, including the administration of electroshock therapy and other coercive practices? Secondly, has the U.S. or any individual state given any consideration to imposing the ban recommended by the Special Rapporteur through legislative or regulatory action? Thirdly, what steps are being taken to reform criminal law and procedure policies and practices of uh, correctional institutions to prevent discrimination against people labeled with psychiatric disabilities, including drugging, 
in prisons, forced drugging in prisons as a condition for release. Lastly, has uh, the President or Congress taken any action since 2000, January 2000, when the U.S. National Council on Disability made its recommendations? Thank you again for the opportunity uh, for me to answer uh, questions of the panel. I'll specifically address Ms. Majadina's questions as well as Mr. Flinterman's. And uh, with regard to non-consensual medical treatment, although uh, the U.S. federal law prohibits non-consensual medical treatment, although medication can be provided without consent under life-threatening situations, the specific rules for non-consensual use of medication are largely governed by state law which cannot violate U.S. and state constitutional provisions on the due process, liberty, equal protection, and privacy of individuals. Professional medical organizations may also have relevant guidelines governing the practice. But we are concerned about use of non-consensual uh, administration of medications and so we have established the Protection and Advocacy for Individuals with Mental Illness program. This program operates in all 50 states, the District of Columbia, five territories and in a consolidated American Indian serving organization. It supports state designated projects that are specifically designed to investigate allegations of rights violations in mental health service settings including the use of seclusion and restraint and similar practices. In 2012 the program received over 18,000 complaints and they were able to close almost 13,000 of those complaints. Of those 13,000, about 10,000 were substantiated with about uh, a fifth of them abuse, about a fifth of them neglect, and over 6,200 cases constituting rights violations. The program also found that about 2,500 cases were not substantiated. But when the intervention was substantiated and the program uh, intervened on site, it achieved positive changes in clients' environmental, community, or living arrangements. We are wor constantly working on getting better at this. In addition, the Medicare Conditions of Participation Regulations for hospitals, including psychiatric hospitals, delineate detailed restrictions on the use of restraints, including drugs or medications, when used to manage a patient's behavior or to restrict their freedom of movement. This set of conditions implements a standard that is set in regulation and is monitored uh, by the Centers for Medicare and Medicaid Services. The department also supports the training, the development of trained mental health consumer and peer uh, workers who are, who are specifically uh, designated to assist those who are receiving services, mental health services, both to access their needed services to ensure their rights are protected. We have expanded since 2000 our comprehensive community mental health services for children and families. We've established a program that facilitates the interaction between the justice system and people transitioning back to civil society or, or into the justice system, both mental health and substance abuse health, uh, services. And the Affordable Care Act will provide one of the largest expansions in mental health and substance abuse treatment services coverage in a generation. The work of our Substance Abuse and Mental Health Services Administration has had significant impact in the culture of treatment environments. And as a result of their work, they have many facilities state that are uh, funded through state grants have successfully eliminated or reduced the use of coercive and re-traumatizing practices, improved safety and morale of clients and staff, and facilitated resilience, recovery, and consumer-directed care. Regarding medication and treatment of federal prisoners, including those with mental disabilities, there's a strict set of federal regulations that governs the conditions under which psychiatric medication can be administered to inmates involuntarily after administrative hearings and unless there are emergency circumstances. 
and then on uh, non-consensual medical treatment again uh, I understand that there are specific rules and welcome all the measures that government has taken to monitor what happens at state level but I'm still uh, surprised that states have been left to devise their own rules and so uh, I'm wondering whether uh, any states have considered the ban that was recommended by the Special Rapporteur on Torture. This ban, I think, was in a statement of the Special Rapporteur in February last year, and it's available on, um, on the UN website uh, documents. So, given that it's really at state level that uh, there's no compliance with the requirement to um, prohibit coercive treatments, especially in, in mental health settings. I think the matter cannot just be left there. There should be some form of good faith undertakings by, by, by federal government to ensure that this these recommendations coming from UN bodies are taken seriously, especially at state level.